Hey everybody, tonight we're going to talk about bond strength. This is the last podcast. You made it to the end of this unit. right? Uh, and this is a short podcast. Nice way to end it. Okay. Um, you're familiar with this. Uh, we mentioned in our last podcast that these numbers are talking about how strong bonds are. So network solids are the strongest at 100. And these numbers really don't mean anything. They just kind of give relative strength of bonds. And of course, everything varies. So they really don't mean a lot, but they just kind of give you a way to look at how strong bonds are relative to another. Network solids clearly are the strongest, followed by ionic, followed by metallic. Right? And then you work your way down. Notice there's a huge drop all the way down to hydrogen bonds. And again, remember, hydrogen bonds are not bonds at all. They are simply attractive forces. Followed by regular everyday dipole forces that do not involve Hydrogen with, with one of the three elements of fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. And then London dispersion forces are finally the smallest and the weakest of all of them. Okay, so you should know those. You should know them in order. You don't need to know these numbers, right? But you do need to know, for example, that network solids are, are uh, stronger than ionic, which are stronger than metallic, etc. You need to know that order. Okay. All right, so the larger number means that the bonds are stronger. It also means that elements that are held together with, for example, ionic bonds are going to have higher melting points than metals are going to have. And they're going to have much higher melting points than anything that is bonded covalently. The same thing is true for boiling points, is that your ionic substances have higher boiling points than metals, which have higher boiling points than anything that's bonded covalently. All right, so let's look at salt versus water. Well, salt is ionic, and water is covalent. It happens to be bonded with, it's one of the H's to O's, so it's hydrogen bonding, but still NaCl has a much higher melting point than H2O. So you need to know that this is higher, and it is stronger, and this is lower. All right. Iron, that's metallic, versus CH4. Well, carbon, hydrogen bonded together, this is clearly covalent. I don't have to go down and figure out uh, whether it's hydrogen bonded, and it's not, because this is hydrogen, but it's not with um, fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. So this is just a regular, uh, you could say, well, is it a dipole? Well, no, it's not even a dipole, because based on its shape, it's going to end up being nonpolar. So the only thing that holds methane together, which is methane gas, is going to be the London dispersion forces. So clearly, something that is metallic is much stronger. Has stronger bonds, has a higher melting point, has a higher boiling point. Graphite. Well, I can stop right there. Because graphite, remember, is one of the network solids. We have graphite and we have diamonds, and we have silicon dioxide. So those are your three which are network solids, and they're going to be much, much stronger than anything else. And this is hydrochloric acid, which happens to be covalently bonded. So let's look at all these things and put them in order of strongest to weakest bonds. Well, diamonds clearly are strongest because they're a network solid. All right, do I have anything that's ionic? Well, yes, I do. I have a metal and a non-metal here. So this is ionic. So that's going to be calcium chloride. And what came next? Well, that was metallic. So copper is a metal. So it's metallic. Which leaves these three guys on the right, and they're the hard ones. So what you have to do is look and say, what actually do I have? Well, if you sit down and you actually do your Lewis dot structures, that will help you, because from that you can figure out that this is going to have the proper shape to be polar. And not only is it polar, but it's a hydrogen to nitrogen bond. So this tells you that this one is uh, what we call hydrogen bonded. Well, again, that's just an attractive force. So that's going to be NH3. And um, again, if you go and, and do the Lewis dot structure for that, you'll find out that you have carbon, and this thing is going to be Cl, 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 Cl. 
right? So as a result, this thing does not have a positive and negative end to the molecule. So this thing is going to be completely nonpolar, whereas HBr is going to be polar. So that means HBr is next because it is polar. And since it is polar, you're going to have um, some, some dipole forces working here, holding the molecules together. So that leaves CCL4 at the bottom. Okay, so we have an example of each one, and those are London, London dispersion forces down here. Okay, so that's it. That's all there, there is to that unit. So you need to know how to tell the strength of intermolecular forces, and given a set of compounds, tell which would have the strongest bonds, the higher melting points, and the higher boiling points. All right, that's it. We're done. Podcast, we're done with the unit. Congratulations. Questions, see me in class, and uh, do your labs and do your worksheets, and we'll see you then. All right, have a good one. Bye-bye.